What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, I'm gonna be answering a, a question that I found in the comments that pertains to air entrainment devices, specifically total flow. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated in this video, we're talking about air entrainment devices, but really we're gonna be talking about total flow. But before we jump into that, don't forget to look at the link in the video description below to go visit this page right here so you can sign up for the Respiratory Coach free resources and free cheat sheets right here. This course is completely free. Now, if you're looking for more help with your TMC or your CSC, of course, you can, you can find the boot camps there to help you pass those exams. Other courses related to pharmacology, all the formulas in respiratory therapy, and our ABG course right here to help you understand ABGs a little better. But I really share this with you so you can go get in that course right there. Now, back to the question. Because here's what the question is asking. It basically says if we have an air entrainment device set up on 60%, okay? So if we're set up on 60%, and let's just say we have a... Um, a 60% uh, T piece. 60% T piece, 60% trick collar, 60% face tint, aerosol mask, whatever it is. Um, the question is, is since 60% has an air to oxygen ratio of one to one, that's only two total parts. And since the max you can go on a standard flow meter is 15 liters per minute, then we know that if we have two total parts, if we put it on 15 liters per minute, then the max total flow we can deliver is 30 liters per minute. So the question is, is, is that enough flow to do the job of a 60% TP, straight collar, face mask, aerosol mask, whatever it is you're, you're utilizing? And the answer is, is it might be. Because what we know, and to do a quick review on um, high flow oxygen devices, which are what your air entrainment devices are, what we know is that to deliver a fixed FiO2, they must meet or exceed the patient's inspiratory demand. So what does that mean? Well, that means how hard is the patient pulling in flow when they breathe? So when I take a breath right here, that's a very normal inspiratory flow. But if I'm sick and I'm breathing like this, <gasps> you see, I have a, a much larger inspiratory demand. I'm, I'm sucking air in faster. And if the patient's inspiratory flow exceeds the flow from the device, then that's going to mean that even more room air is being inhaled in with the 60% oxygen and aerosol coming from the air entrainment device, it's going to dilute that FiO2 down from 60% down to 50 or maybe 40%. And the patient's not going to be getting the prescribed FiO2. Now, little asterisk right here. Uh, obviously, we know that today's world has other devices that may um, allow us to deliver 60% 70%, 80% and greater to our patients much more effectively than a T-piece or a trait collar or an aerosol mask or a face tint. More than likely, if this patient in a, in a clinical setting would likely go on a true high flow system such as Airvo or Vapotherm. Not a sponsorship, no plug, just given the two primary devices that, that, that we're utilizing more often in the clinical setting because we know that we can control in those and with those devices we can control the FiO2 as well as the flow so we can say 60% at a flow of 50 liters per minute that, that that's very simple to do but we're talking about rooted foundational respiratory therapy theory here where we're talking about air entrainment devices okay and so well, the question is now, I say, okay, well, if the patient has an inspiratory demand flow of, let's say, 35 liters per minute, well, this is not going to be functional for them. This is going to lead your patient to not getting 
the full 60% that they are supposed to be getting and that they are prescribed to get. So the question is, how do we increase the flow in this scenario? Now, remember, the, the, the easiest way to increase flow is to just increase the oxygen input, which is what Egan's talks about right here in the 13th, 13th edition on page 916. This is out of chapter 42. There's a box right here. It says box 42.2, increasing FiO2 capabilities of an air entrainment nebulizer to ensure you're meeting the flows. The first things we can do is increase the oxygen input flow. And that makes sense. If we have two total parts here, if we're on 10 liters per minute, times two, then that gives us a total flow of 20 liters per minute. If we increase that to 15 liters per minute on the flow meter, then you can see we increase our total flow. So that makes sense. But the question is, what happens when you max out at 15? Okay. And how, what, what can we do there? Well, there's a, an approach or a technique that is um, basically where you set up two nebulizers in tandem to double the flow. So, for, for example, it looks like this, basically. If this is a nebulizer and it's sending, it's got tubing going out to the patient, you set up two of these in tandem, you connect them with the Y adapter, and you put both of these on 15 liters per minute. Now remember, we're delivering, we're set on 60%. Now what this does is, is we're set on 60%. So our air to oxygen ratio is still one to one for both of these. We have two total parts. Now remember, these are both set up to different flow meters, but bleeding in to one, one piece of tubing that leads to the patient, to the device that the patient is receiving the aerosol from. So if this is two total parts here, then the total flow from this is 30 liters per minute. The total flow from this, 15 liters per minute, one to one is 30 liters per minute. As they all come together, we will now be delivering 60 liters per minute. And that should exceed your patient's inspiratory demand flow. Now, if we step back here for just a second and we say, okay, well, how do we know what our patient's inspiratory demand flow is? Well, we can guesstimate this by uh, multiplying our minute ventilation times three. So if your patient has an increased minute ventilation, we know normal somewhere in the ballpark of about five to seven liters per minute. Uh, somebody that has an increased minute ventilation, let's say they have a, a their minute ventilation is 15 liters per minute. We multiply that times three, and this tells us that the patient has an approximate inspiratory demand flow of 45 liters per minute. That is our goal that this device needs to exceed. And in this situation, 60 liters per minute is greater than 45. We would be delivering 60% to this patient. Why? Because the delivered flow, the total flow, exceeds the patient's inspiratory demand flow. And you say, okay, that sounds good. But when we're talking about spontaneously breathing patients, it's not the easiest thing in the world to know what their minute volume is. So we say, so how am I supposed to know that their minute volume is 15 liters per minute? Well, that gets a little trickier. You actually have to measure it with the right respirometer or some type. You have to measure it somehow, their minute ventilation. But Again, not really practical. So what we know is that we can look at our devices and we can watch our patient breathe on it. And what we know anytime we're delivering aerosol therapy is that if the aerosol mist stays visible throughout all of the inspiratory phase, then the flow from the device is greater than the patient's inspiratory flow. If during inspiration, the inspiratory flow Scratch that. If during inspiration, the aerosol mist coming from the device goes away, then what that tells us is that that patient has pulled all the flow from the device to the point that it's disappeared, and now they're bringing in room air. 
and that's going to dilute the delivered FiO2. I hope that makes sense. Now, Egan's also mentions one other way that you can deliver higher FiO2s at higher flows without doing the tandem setup. And that would be where you just dial in a lower FiO2 on your device. So let's say you wanted to give 60%, but you need to give it at a higher flow rate. What we could do is we could uh, scratch all of this. Okay, so this goes away. And we just set it on 40%. Now, 40% has an air to oxygen ratio of 3 to 1. Okay, and so if we put them on 15 liters, 15 times 4, that's 60 liters per minute. That's, that's the same as what we were achieving over here when we built the tandem with two set up at 60%. So another key point probably worth mentioning here is, is that total flow and FiO2 have an inverse relationship with each other. The lower your FiO2, then the higher your flow will be when set on the same flow rate. That's because the air to oxygen ratios are different. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. 40% is an air to oxygen ratio of three to one. 60% higher FiO2 has an air to oxygen ratio of one to one. How many parts total? Four total parts, two total parts. How did I get that? Three plus one is four, one plus one is two. Now, if both of these are set, on 10 liters per minute at the flow meter, then you can see here that 40% with four total parts times 10 is a total flow of 40 liters per minute. 60%, two total parts times 10 equals 20 liters per minute. And we could do the same thing if we went down to 28%. 28% I think has something like a 10 to 1, 11 total parts. If we put this on 10 liters, then you have a total flow of 110 liters per minute. So my point is, is anytime you are increasing FiO2 on your air entrainment devices, you have to ask yourself if you need to adjust the flow. Because if you go from 28 to 40 to 60%, and you keep your flow set at the same value, then look what's happening to your total flow. And likely, right around here, your patient's going to start to exceed that with their inspiratory demand flow. So we have to be aware of this. And this is what makes you a respiratory therapist. Now, I want to go back here to what uh, Egan said. Egan said, you know what? If you want to deliver 60%, uh, set it on 40 um, and deliver a higher flow. But then you can down here bleed in more oxygen. How much do you have to bleed in? Well, that's when you have to use an oxygen analyzer down here to make sure that you have bled in the appropriate amount of oxygen. The flow is being generated by the air entrainment device here. So you can deliver that higher flow, but the additional oxygen coming in here is what's going to help increase the FiO2. You just have to use an oxygen analyzer to do that. Again, chapter 42. This is box 42.2, this box right here. You can check out all of this. They even give you a good illustration here, if I can hold this up. They actually even give you a good illustration of the tandem setup and how it looks and how it works. Basically, you just double the flow. If you set up two nebulizers, blend them together, put them, bleed them all into one to deliver to the patient, then you've just doubled your flow. That's what it is. So, but see, these are the intricacies. These are the things that, that you know as a respiratory therapist that very few other disciplines know and understand because you're a cardiopulmonary expert. So serious stuff. May not see it a whole lot, but when you do, you got to know it. That's air entrainment devices related to high FIO2s and how to ensure you're delivering total flow. I'm a respiratory coach. Stay here with me on YouTube. If you want me to answer a question for you, put it in the comment section below. Tell me what class you're in, 
Um, I'll try to get a video out for you in a relatively fair amount of time uh, to, to try to meet your needs so that you get something out of this community. Hit the subscribe button and the like, if you will, as well. Respiratory Coach on Instagram, Respiratory Coach on TikTok, Joe Lewis on LinkedIn. Send me an email also with any questions, respiratorycoach at gmail.com, um, and I will answer those in due time also. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, best wishes to you along your journey to becoming a registered respiratory therapist. So remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.